that we can try to make sure that that, that type of thing we need you to be in positions of power to determine who to prosecute, what type of sentences and crimes to try to charge people with, whether to prosecute in the first place, and, and you know, who to go after, right? Because certainly six young men were um, sought to be uh, held for criminal sanctions, whereas their white counterparts were not. And no one is saying that the crime were equal, and so that the sentences necessarily have to be the same. But what we are saying is that um, you have to treat people fairly. You have to absolutely treat people fairly, or it'll come back to home. Now that can go for any of us in any situation, but understand this, our job is not to keep you out of law school. It's to get as many people in as we can. Your job, your job is to make it easy for us to do that. Now, if you give me a 130 and a 22, you make it really hard for me to get you. <laughs> and I'm not going to work that hard when I have, uh, most of us will have thousands of applications that we have to review. And unfortunately, if yours has 22 red flags and I'm dealing with someone else who has three, guess who's going to get into law school? So your job is to distinguish those fires and to pull out those red flags. Um, if, it's, if it's something that involves, like, actually a criminal record, of an arrest, et cetera, then no. you do need to disclose those. Okay. Um, but if it's just you got in-school suspension in high school, yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. Right. Yeah. For me, I was um, at the Foundation Law Student Association, and also IPSO, which is the IP student organization, so that was the area that I wanted to practice. And I definitely maintain these involvements um, on the practice with the uh, attorney level organizations. But I, I also know that these some of these attorney organizations also have student chapters, and their members usually they waive membership fees for students. So I'll definitely press upon you the importance of um, signing on with a lot of these groups: the Asian Lawyers Association, the Asian American Bar Association. I'll preface my comments with I specifically joined groups because I had a game plan. When I went to law school, I had a specific plan. I knew I did not want to be a litigator. I knew I wanted to do transactional work. And I knew that in order to do transactional work, I had to go to a large firm. So I went in with a mindset of, what do I need to do to get to where I want to go? And I hooked up with Professor Moore, and she told me point blank, you're gonna have to do law review. You're gonna have to do um, any sort of writing classes that are really going to help you. And also because being in, well, I'm Jamaican, but being black, that, you know, you might want to make sure that you're in the top of the class. Just bottom line, she said, writing a brief and arguing it in front of Kay. So I did that. I was a member of Balsa. And I also was a Landell professor. And I did that for two reasons. One, at South Texas, if you do well in a class, you, that professor will ask you to teach that class on weekends. So that was my weekend time that I was taking to help, you know, students who are a year or so behind me. But what it did for me was, number one, it prepared me for the bar because there were certain classes I kind of just shifted through the bar. But it also made an impression on your professors who were also then able to really sing your praises to the people they knew at law firms. You know, oh, you know. So it's, for me, I took that route because I had a specific plan in mind. When you go to law school, whether you decide you want to be an in-house counsel at Exxon or Shell or um, <coughs> Citgo, or you want to go into a large firm, or if you decide I want to be a mid-sized firm or solo practitioner, look for the curricular activities that can Don't pay the tutor, work up, working through it. Then when you feel, feel comfortable with that, go back to the tutor and say, here, this is another section I need to work on. You know, and So you invest $100, $200 at a, at a, at a shot at most as you're working with this tutor, and then you're really working on your own. It's like going to a, a, a gym and getting a, a, a fitness instructor. You, they work with you for a little while, and then you continue doing it on your own. And that's how I would, if I had to go back and do it all again, that's how I would do it. The flip side of it is, more than the money that I'm concerned about, it's how personal are they going to be to your skills. That's what I'm more concerned about. And that's why I'm suggesting a tutor. You can get a lot of these students, or you can even professional tutors who may charge you $50 or $60 an hour, but you spend four or five hours with them, which is 300 bucks, but they're giving you very specifically tailored information to you. And you're not laying out a thousand in one shot. 
and you're not being overwhelmed by the entire thing, you're taking one step. Right. And so there were things that I could actually get out of that. So I'd say be a member for the first year, second year, get more involved. I'm just so excited for you all because I know that you're all interested in law school and you learn so much about yourself. You learn so much about the world and for leadership in a student organization. That was one of the, the best things. It's not only do I get to interact with amazing people every single day, I get to have a seat at the table when we decide the direction which to take. <laughs>